Call of Duty, man. I was like, okay. Uh, are you really? <laughs> you know, I actually, uh, so so I, I, I never liked uh, Call of Duty. When you play, do you play against other players or do you just play the story mode? Yes and yes. Because mostly I went, I actually like the mobile better. Oh, I never even tried the mobile. I like the mobile better. And the mobile you're playing against other people? Yeah, and they have a mode where you can actually just roll a little story or whatever. But um, most time I just go into um, Battle Royal and see how long I can last. Okay, yeah. So, and that's and that's just it. I never really like. Just go in. Okay, there uh, we go. Yeah, I never really like uh, playing Call of Duty. Uh, and another popular one was uh, Counter Strike. And I, I haven't really- tried that. My son, my um, my older son, he's um, he's into that stuff, and I didn't, I haven't, I haven't played that one. He said he likes that one better than Call of Duty. Yeah, so Counter Strike is kind of like the OG when it comes down to first person arena shooters. Okay, and I, I remember way back in the day. I'm talking about maybe 2005 or six. Oh, okay, it's old school. Oh, it's, 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 it has a long history. So around 2005 or six, I used to go to internet cafes because my thing is strategy games. That's okay. The thing I like. okay. So I would go to the internet cafe and I would play oh. stuff like uh, Starcraft. That was the hottest one. I didn't, I didn't like Starcraft. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one I did get into, but I stopped playing. Which one? Um, What is it? Modern Combat 5. Never heard of that one. That's the joint right here. Ever, and that's a strategy game? Yeah, because it actually goes into it has it was like they were trying to play off of Call of Duty but put it in a mobile fashion. Mm. But the problem was when Call of Duty figured out what they were doing, they changed up how they did it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> they switched up the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of left them stuck. So they had they have like the graphics on it, it's great. Um the story, I like it because it goes through different modes. It don't show you the same. You might go through the same thing like three or four times each time it's something different. Okay. So I like that part. You're just in the same place, but it's a different mode. Different mode. Different mode. Yeah. So so right now is just me and you. I didn't actually advertise this live. I should have advertised it, but we had some connection problems, some scheduling problems. Yeah, I absolutely. Like, yeah, so I was like, ah, uh, I won't advertise this. We'll just see. Uh, if we'll just have a live between ourselves and it'll just get automatically posted, I guess. But basically, I came to your channel. I thought your channel was outstanding. I'm not quite sure what your channel is about, though, right? I know. <laughs> no, and, and you know what? I don't mean that to be funny. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know that you, you talk about law in your channel. That much is absolutely clear, right. but I'm not sure what the focus is. Is the sub- focus for reform, or is you know justice and reform for you know people of color, or is it mostly about law? Now I'll tell you up front, my channel, my channel is really just about law. So okay. I, you could probably tell from some of the videos that I've done that I spent a lot of time talking about R. Kelly and his situation and looking at some of the things that I believe is unjust, right? So that's kind of how my channel got started. It's a combination of things. First, I myself am going through some legal situations that I'm not even going to get into. Okay. And that put me in the arena where I had to start learning about law because my position is that a lot of times it may not be practical to go out and hire a lawyer. Absolutely. And because you end up, especially when you're looking at fees and fines, you're looking at being liable for fees and fines because let's say you're in a situation where someone is trying to sue you for like, let's say $50,000. Absolutely. You go to a lawyer and the lawyer tells you, oh, well, my retainer is uh, $25,000. Absolutely. <laughs> so you're like, okay, so I, I paid the $25,000. What's the best case scenario? The best case scenario is that I win and I save myself 25000 
right? You know, so the alternative to that is just represent yourself, right? And then me personally, I believe a lot of things are fixed. So long story, though, that's how I came into blogging about law is that I have my own little personal problems. And then the entire R. Kelly thing started to jump off. And I was like, you know, this is crazy. I was like, no, I got to I got to I got to help do my part in trying to, you know, get the word out to show people, you know, what's in jest about this whole situation. So I'm not saying that I know all the facts of R. Kelly case. All I know is what's out there in the Internet. And some of the things that I see, I believe is wrong. But, you know, that's so that that's it for me. Again, my channel is really about law. But lately, I've been focusing on R. Kelly. What I'm trying to do is get into the self-help arena, which it seems like you're already doing. But again, I'm not quite sure. So, you know, what's, what's your channel all about? OK, because you, you drop four things on me. So I, I, <laughs> you want me to go ahead and just ramble with them or OK? No, just the, ramble. The There's no format. There's no okay. format. Okay, the first part is you asked me what the channel itself is. And then you asked what was my stance? Is, am I for justice? Am I doing this for a certain community? Blah, blah, blah. And then we you went into hiring a lawyer and the pros and cons of that. And then we the you kind of ended with the fixed situation. Right. Okay. Well, my channel direction, um, let me give you the start, I guess. Mm. Um the whole crux of it, I started something, I've been kind of, I was kind of raised up to be combative and be, I question everything. Right. And even my grandmother used to always tell me because I was, I was even like that with my father. Like the person that taught me to be that way, I was that way with him from like five years old. And my grandmother used to always tell me, you don't think shit stink. And I was like, eh, it is what it is. But you know, this is, this is what was inbred into me. So I questioned everything. And it grew, grew into me going into different professions, learning different aspects of law. And then um, through the course of all of this, I go meet up with one of my older brothers. He shows me something by me being in a banking industry. What he showed me was incomplete. Let's put it that way. And he had spent three grand for it. Mm. So I was like, hey, dude, uh, let me finish this for you and show me the person that you paid this money to. Mm. And legitimately, the person that showed him didn't didn't do what I thought they were doing. I thought they were trying to cheat him. They weren't trying to cheat him. They were actually they did what they were shown by somebody else. And can I, they ask, can, I ask, uh -huh. can I ask what we're talking about? You said show he bought something. Show. Okay, actually, um, it's something that I won't ever get into on my channel. But it was like the UCC one. When okay, he me was the UCC one. It was incomplete. Right. You see now UCC one is remind me what that is because I, I know it's a it's an instrument basically for the long and short of a banking and basically you're creating a banking instrument okay. that's what it's for that's the long that's the that's the that's the compressed version that's not exactly what it is financial instrument now Absolutely. with that said i was kind of getting into this stuff around the time of the free man movement okay I'm just gonna throw that out there, and then we can talk about that after oh, you're done. Oh no, that's why I was talking around it like that because I know you get into that. <laughs> yeah, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I, I know you touch on it. I know you touch on it. Right. Well, not. So I, no, let's, no, park no. That. let's park that for now. Go ahead and finish your story. Yeah, because I, I actually, I actually, God, that's something I won't ever touch, and it's a reason behind that. But um, so I go into it, and as we're going into it, I'm still having, I'm having little minor cases, and then all of a sudden, my brother, he's one of these people that he wants to. He want to see how good you are. Right. So I, I win this case. He gets in trouble. I win that case. He gets in trouble. I win that case. Then he's bringing friends. I'm winning that case, winning that case, winning that case. And then as it goes on, I'm getting better at certain things. So the cases get bigger. The stakes get higher. And then it gets to the point to where I, me through my arrogance, I'm like, you know, I can't nobody beat me. I'm, I'm up here getting these cats. And then all of a sudden they're like, here you go, Rico. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, so, when you say you beat these cases, were you going into court with absolutely, these people? Absolutely. Were you getting up and speaking for them? Not every time, no. Um, but you it got to the point. Sometimes. It got to the point to where I was go like Douglasville. 
Douglasville. Because um, Douglasville, Georgia. Because uh, most of this, the crux of this began in Texas, Atlanta, Georgia. Right? Yeah, I'm in um, Houston, Texas right now. Okay, go ahead. The crux of this began in Atlanta, Georgia. So Douglasville is a outskirt or a suburb of suburb suburb of Atlanta, and it got to the point to where I would go out and do. Um, I was sending out so much paperwork that people, the judges and attorneys and all that began to know what my paperwork looked like because it looked different. Right. So um, one, t- one case I was sitting in there with a young lady. Um, she was charged with a DUI, which was BS because even the, even the, um, you'll be amazed at s- some of the stuff these stupid bastards say because they think they can get away with it. But the guy, the long and short, she was a bartender. So she smells like alcohol. Right. She's leaving work two in the morning. Cop pulls her over. She's a real pretty girl. She, you know, she's like six three, six four, just legs for days. Right. And the cop tries to get her number. She's like, it's two in the morning. I don't feel I don't have time for this. My feet hurt. I'm tired. Right. So she doesn't give him the number. And all of this is recorded. He didn't even pay attention that there was a person standing beside the where they were stopped at recording him. Mm. He's trying to get her phone number. And she didn't want to give him the number, so he arrested her for a DUI. Mm, man, never, she never, and she never, um, she never took a breathalyzer, never t- did a, um, the blood test, never did any of that. So they didn't right. have any evidence. So it's based on his word, on his his testimony. Right. And then when he realized, because again, that was one of those times. Again, I'm learning. She drove. I tell her, yeah, go file your affidavit. And when we filed the affidavit, we noticed that not only did he change his statement, but the prosecution changed. So what I had to do was the prosecution the original the stuff. People in the prosecution t- change, or did the prosecution change their strategy? Absolutely, both. Okay, both of them. The police officer changed his statement. Mm. The prosecution changed how they were coming at her. Mm. But when we got up there, the um, judge even asked her, "Do you feel like dealing with her and him?" Mm. And she goes, "Well, who is him?" He goes, "No, we're not going to do that today." Mm. <laughs> so, so, so when you stepped on the scene, they 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 pretty much just disappeared. They 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 folded as soon as you stepped on the scene. Most of ninety percent of the time, um, I didn't have to show up. Uh-huh. Very, hold on for one second. Go ahead. So, what's going on, everybody? So, if you are just tuning in, I'm hanging out with this guy that I found on YouTube. His name is Supreme Decisions. He has a a YouTube channel. Where he logs about law. He's right now telling me what this channel is all about. We haven't really gotten into that. He's telling us now. But uh, this guy is real sharp and he's on top of it. And uh, fans check his channel out. But go ahead. So so you get to the point where you show up, the prosecutor changed up their, their, their lining startup, they changed their approach. And eventually they just said, you know what, we're just going to drop it. Yeah, yeah. And they started dropping cases. And what happened was because to that, at that point, I'm still I'm suing police officers. I'm suing judges. I'm suing district attorneys. I'm going after corporations. I'm, but again, it was and I tell everybody when I started, I was angry. I was just so angry because I was tired because there was like people always say, well, he's a criminal. Absolutely. I wasn't always a good guy. I'm, hell, I'm not even a nice person now. Right, right. But, you know, I've been arrested in DeKalb County more than 50 times. I've got, you know, several assault charges on my little record or whatever. So, so, so hold, on, hold on a second. Is it safe to say your law degree came from DeKalb County uh, Department of Corrections? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, look, look, I live, I live in uh, Chicago and I'm getting a, a Cook County Court Law Certificate now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a tee hee because even one of the, a couple of those lawsuits, it was a couple of brothers. I had to go out to Chicago oh. to sit down with these brothers. They, oh. they were doing their thing because see what a lot of people always tell me is, oh, well, you don't know everything. Absolutely do not. I'm not even going to profess that I do. Well, well let, me, let, me I go let me interject. Okay. Law, you know, I was talking to this one guy. Uh, who's an old head, and he's been doing essentially the same thing you said, and he—I mean, the same thing that you do—and he told me the law is an ocean, right? Nobody Absolutely. can do everything, not even lawyers Absolutely. and judges. But go ahead with your story. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, no, no, no problem, no problem. Um, but yeah, so I went out there because I have bits and pieces that I'm good at because I right. did those more than one time, right? And some some cases, hundreds of times. I've done that. It's easy. 
Right. But there's other cats that's been doing other things that they have more of a specialty in that section. And I have no problem with saying, you know what, here go a couple bucks. Can I come sit down? Can I eat with you? I ain't oh, got no wow. problem doing that. Right. And those brothers, the same brothers that I went up to Chicago, they flew down to Atlanta to do the exact same thing with me. Mm. You know, so we became, you know, because we've been exchange information. It would it would got I've actually I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you one that was funny to me because there was a, there was a question that you asked. So I'm a, I'm gonna answer in just a little bit because it goes into something that you had asked. I don't do for the black. I don't do for the white. Mm. One of my greatest allies is a dude named Colonel Wilson down in Arkansas. Colonel Wilson. Colonel. Colonel. I'm, I'm country man. You got to bear with me. It's Colonel Wilson. <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, all black people are from the south eventually, <laughs> unless they came directly from Jamaica or Haiti or something okay. like that. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, but yeah, Colonel Wilson. Colonel Wilson. Um, he helped me out a lot. Um, because even when. Because just to give you just give you a touch, I haven't had a driver's license since 2008. Whoa. So, you know, but again, there are certain things I'm not going to touch because there's a reason I'm able to do that. Right. So that's deep. But that's something else. And what happens is understanding oneself. But when you talk about what is my stance, I did a video. And I think I put it up literally a week ago. And it said, I'm for justice, no matter who it is. I have the truth no matter who tells it. Right. Now, I don't have to like someone's stance on something. But right. somebody asked me a question one day because I even have a situation right now. I'm helping somebody I know is a bad person. Mm. I'm not even going to lie to you. I know they're a bad person. Mm. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. But the one thing I appreciated was he told me that up front. Mm. He told me, and he, I told him, I said, you know what? Send me over what your issue is. Mm. And, he, and I told him, I said, what I need you to do is be 100% real with me. Right. Just real. And he told me, he said, you know what? I've done a whole bunch of messed up stuff that right. I didn't do. Right. I didn't do that. Right. <laughs> so, so, and it's one of those where, where I talk about habit evidence. Things that you have habitually been doing can bite you in the ass, essentially, because it's not outside your character. Right. Like if somebody was to come and say, oh, well, Supreme punched this dude in the face. Yeah, it's not really outside my character because you got 50 witnesses to say otherwise. Like, yeah, he do stuff like that. Right. And it's like it's it's one of those where I don't I don't profess to be something I'm not. Right. And at the end of the day, I don't play law. This is something I live right. I do it every morning. This is what I do. Um, I've got mounds and mounds of equipment. And apparently today I'm getting ready to learn how to use stream yards. Right, right, right. Yes, yeah, so that was the other thing. I was like, oh, this brother ain't using nothing. Yeah, so, so you're you're eventually going to want to do more collaborations with people. Absolutely. Especially with the type of stuff that you're doing. So stream yard. And, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. Why should I front? Everybody knows that I'm not really good at collaborations, right? Right. But yeah, so stream yard is uh, one of the free ones. But there's a a paid version. Another one is Zoom. What is? I was, see, I had to do a Zoom the other day, but I was doing that with um because just on the low, a lot of because a lot of folks ain't paying attention to what's going on with my channel. They think I'm up here. Oh, you getting donations? Just doing nothing. If you notice, there's not another there's not a another YouTuber with less than thirty thousand subscribers that have a join button. Just keep that in mind because I don't even have five thousand yet. Right. So just pay attention to that. Well, you then, know what? Let, me, let me just say this. Let me let me just say this. In regards to monetization, that's something that I really need to get on the ball with. Maybe my material isn't that good, but my position on monetization is this. You're working and you should be paid for it. You know, absolutely. so forget what everybody else said. If you're coming up on YouTube and you're talking about toenails and elbows absolutely. and people watching, you need to be paid for it because that's the work that you're doing and you're delivering content and people are either going to like it or they don't like it. They, they could, you know, support you or not support you, but Absolutely. you shouldn't have to listen to uh, complaints, but go ahead. I'm sorry. But you know what? You got, you always got to troll the people that, because you know what, what trips people out. People always ask me, what do you do for a living? And the first thing I just out of habit, I'll say, yeah, um, I'm working and I've got a couple of things going with digital marketing. I'm in school. And then I'll go, you know what? Yeah, I do YouTube. And they'll be like, really? How's that working out for you? 
Right. I, you know, I, 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 I always tell them, I give them a number. I said, well, I don't know. I'm still building, but last year I made 30 G's. And everybody asked really? like, what? From YouTube. Did you really? Yes, sir. Holy moly. You killing it. You killing it. That's a substantial amount of money for somebody who's on YouTube talking about a lot. I'm, I'm going to tell you. Hold on. With less than 5,000 subscribers. That's what that's what throws everybody. Because, right. again, that's the anomaly. Right. Because, apparently, I found something that people want to watch. Because even last, I think, last month, I was going, because, again, I'm constantly on the phone with them. Because I'm not going to lie to you. Google messes up your checks a lot. Mm. But when they pay you, they pay you everything they owe you. So you don't have to talk to them no more. Mm. Um, but I was sitting out and the lady is going with me and she's like, this is how you have to do your channel. This is how you have to do the analytics. This is before we, and this is all just so I can get this join button. Cause mm. keep in mind, it's for 30,000 subscribers or more. I have less than 5,000. So what's the join button all, uh, all about? I did see that on your channel. The and uh, I think I did read something on one of the YouTube pages and they were saying how you can uh, build like a subscription base. Uh, audience, but uh, tell me what that's all about. Well, what happened was I originally started to do this on um, Patreon, mm -hmm. but I don't know what happened with Patreon, or they just didn't like me, or what it was, but the bottom fell out, and people that were signing up on Patreon, they weren't being charged. Mm. So I'm not putting out content and not getting paid for it, especially right. when it's supposed to be exclusive content. Mm -hmm. So, um, just so happened, I was talking to one of the people at Google about something that was happening on my channel because I have more, I have more issues with police unions than I do with actual police officers. Right. But, um, cause you know, what'll surprise you. I have law firms that'll call me to talk about strategy. I have judges that'll call me. They'll tell me, I don't like what you're doing. However, comma, it's a necessity because that's why I tell people judges want to side with you, mm -hmm. but you have to do it a certain way. And the problem is a lot of us are seeing wrong stuff. We don't question it. And then we're putting it out. And then we're wondering why we, when we go from step one to step nine, we're not getting the result that we're supposed to get. And, and then, uh, just, just to let you know, I'm typing at the same time. Oh, I don't yeah. get the questions. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. I think saying. we're still on number two. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but the but the end the end result of it is I'm giving you something and I'm giving folks something that I feel has substance. That's why I don't put out videos every day. I don't just right. put off something that's oh I because I can do a video every day. My videos are five to ten minutes long max, you know. Right. So I can put out a video every day. The problem is putting out a video every day doesn't give you give you food. I want to make sure you got food to eat. And the basis of my channel came out simply because of the Rico. Um, in 2012, I had like 4 million subscribers on Periscope because a lot of people were like, look, dude, you need to be safe because me and my brother, it got to a point, me and one of my brothers, we couldn't even be together because they were like, the inf people dying over information. Come on, we rode down to Florida. The fans showed us pictures of us in Florida on the beach because we were, we were walking on the beach so they couldn't listen to us. Mm -hmm. And they had pictures of us because they were listening to us. Mm. And my, my uncle told us while we were down and he said, you know, you two can't be together anymore. Mm. That was the last time I was in the same room in the same time with my brother. And mm. that was in 2011. Yeah, that oh, no, was 2000, crazy. 2012, my fault. I take that back. 2012. Because a couple of days after the um the hearing, he went his way, I went my way, and you know, it is what it is. But it's because it got to the point to where now a lot of people are looking at, okay, what's the purpose of my channel? Well, my oldest brother, the one that was that he was the sensible one in all of this, but he was also the one that got in the most trouble, I guess you could say. Mm. He told me, he said, look, and he said, you're retired. You're not doing nothing. He said, why don't you just talk about what you know? Mm. I said, okay, I know this. And it's something that I get up and I study every day. I still study it every day. Mm -hmm. Because just like you said, it's an ocean. I, I can't learn everything. I'm still a child. I'm not going. And that was one thing we always say. I'm not grown. So I can I can learn something. So, as long so, as I can learn something, I can keep going with it. Oh, yeah. There, there's always something to talk about when it comes down to law. Um, so I'll let you finish talking. 
Yeah. Because I don't want to interrupt your flow. I'm sorry. I have questions. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. I have questions. Go ahead. Okay. But like you said, my, my stance is not necessarily for for one community. Okay. Actually, I just lied to you. My stance is for a community. It's for the poor and mm -hmm. disenfranchised. Because just like you said, when you talk about hiring a lawyer, because I'm going to get into that now. Mm -hmm. Hiring a lawyer, everybody doesn't have that luxury. Right. Because that is actually a luxury. And then here's the problem, because it's an example I give all the time on my channel. And it's the the story of piranhas. You go to a lake that's filled with piranha. If mm -hmm. nothing is in there other than a piranha, the water is completely still. Right. You bring in another animal that's not a piranha. The piranha will eat that animal. All the piranha will eat that animal. Now, I had a guy ask, I said, why would you give that example? I said, the person that you hired, the defense attorney, He's got an ABA card. Mm -hmm. The prosecutor has an ABA card. The judge, ABA card. Guess who the piranha are? Mm. Guess who's not? Mm. That's deep. That's deep. So That is deep. And, and then when we go into hiring a lawyer, and I got two stories. Because one is with my sister-in-law. Um, she had a couple issues. And her people hired a lawyer for you. Okay, cool. Not a big deal. How much did they pay? Well, we're gonna leave we're gonna leave that number undisclosed. Okay, <laughs> I asked for a reason, but, by the way. Oh, oh I'm, yeah, I've got I've got a couple other ones, but just say it was, it was they, they did some numbers on. Go ahead, go ahead. So she calls me because she's like, I don't like the way they're talking. I'm like, all right, cool. So I come down here and immediately all their talking turns to something else. Notice I said their talking turns to something else. Because again, you can't just say anything to me because not only can I tell you, cause like I had one and I actually talked about her. She's at Sudlow and Sudlow. Her name is Anna. Right. Anna at Sudlow and Sudlow told my sister that due process or the discovery file may or may not be given. It's at the discretion of the judge. And I asked, I said, when did due process become discretionary? Right. I said, because that's not what Texas code says. And it's 39.14. And she goes, oh, are you an attorney? I said, hell no. I said, but that doesn't change your duty. Right, right, right. Because at the end of the day, if that's not what you're following and you're allowing the prosecution not to do their job, right. that's an effectiveness of counsel. I said, we will come and get your ass after we get them. Right. Immediately after that, the cases are dismissed, right? Because I take over those cases. They get dismissed. We go down there because I kept telling her I didn't feel right about it. Let's go get a copy of this judge's dismissal. I said, because some, something about this ain't right, don't feel right. So we go down there. And while we're down there at the Houston courthouse, um, just keep in mind what I just said, too. Because April, April 6th, what, what, hold on, what, 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 where we at? April 6th, we were told that courtrooms are shut down, right? Mm -hmm. April 6th, I was in a Houston courtroom. Now, they told us that the courts are still shut down, right? April, say that again. I'm sorry. April 6th of this year, right. everything was supposed to be shut down, right? That's right. I was in the courtroom in April 6th uh, this year uh, here in Houston. Right. They don't care about the coronavirus. Huh? They, now, they, I'm going to flip back. Because, but the courts are shut down. They'll tell you that the courts are shut down. Now, I'm going to fast forward. We're going to get this piece of paper. A dude walks out the office. I'm talking, hey, what you want? I say, yeah, I want a copy of the dismissal order, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. He comes back. He's standing up straight and he's whispering. I'm like, why are you trying to hit me with the quiet storm? What's going on? Like, right. he was like, do you want both of them? I said, both? No, I want the No, he said, oh, do you want both of them? And he's whispering. I'm like, dude, ain't nobody out here but me and you. What's going on? He's trying to avoid he a said, camera or something. He goes, he leans over and he goes, because again, we're not social distancing anymore. He leans over and he goes, yeah, there's another case. I said, oh, bring both of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So he comes back and while he's handing it to me, he's rustling the papers. And he goes, they've been doing this lately. When a case gets dismissed, they're refiling them at, under new charges. Uh, and they're not sending out notices. Notice uh, what I just and they're not sending out notes. Uh, this man in the process. courthouse told me this and right. was whispering it. Right. And he, he got a job. It. He got to keep his so, job. So he, he hands it to me. Trying to help hold me. on. Hold on. Now he hands it to me. It looks like one sheet of paper. So right. I grab it. But he, when he handed it to me, he kept doing like this. 
So when I grabbed it, I wait till I got in the elevator and got downstairs. So when I flipped it, I looked at it, two sheets of paper. I flipped it over and I showed her. I said, look at the date on it. Right. And she said, the date? I said, yeah, that's the day after I told them I was going to file ineffectiveness of counsel on. Wow. Her attorney, right. her defense attorney. That's right. the one I told them. They, filed, they went to the prosecutor the next day to get them to file charges against her. Right. Had another young lady, literally a couple weeks, a couple days ago. She, had, she calls me and she goes, you know what? I apologize. And I was like, what are you apologizing to me for? She was like, because I did what you told me not to do. And I said, okay, what was that? She said, I hired an attorney. Uh. I started laughing. I said, I said, how did he get you? So basically she goes in and the attorney doesn't show up to court. Keep in mind, the courts are closed, right? She went to court. Right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so the attorney doesn't even show up to court. She has to call him. She calls him. He tells her, oh, why didn't you do the, um, the after court stuff and pay a fine? She was like, no. Why did I pay you? Right, right, right. Why would I pay him? <laughs> Hold a second. How does the attorney not, you know, show up? How does he not even get involved? I mean, I, I mean, you may as well. And, she, and she's cutting the check. Right. The attorney was more than the fine. Damn. Now keep that in mind. So I told her, I said, here's here's the thing. I want half of what you paid the attorney and a two hundred fifty dollar aggravation fee because because <laughs> you didn't want to listen. Right. Half right. of what you paid the attorney and I, a, a extra two hundred fifty dollars because. What's happening is most people are forgetting most states revenue are generated by their <laughs> their law enforcement. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, so you got so six weeks state, without yeah, you got six weeks without them actually generating revenue. Right. So they gotta make that up because it's a corporation. Right. They can't have they can't flatten out the bottom line. Right. This is why this is why a lot why of their money is coming from the federal government too. I believe. I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, okay. When when you start going in and you start suing these bastards and you find that their money doesn't come from the federal government. Majority of their money comes from city city budgeting and the police unions. Because well, police what unions, I mean by that, what I mean by that like, charging, okay. What I mean by that is that anytime you have a person locked up. Oh, absolutely. The federal yeah, government yeah. is going to fund those programs. The federal absolutely. government is actually going to, you know, fund. Well, yeah, it, for it, them to house a certain amount of people, absolutely. Right. Yes, I right. mean, it, yeah. it's it's a top up, a, a top from the top to the bottom type right. of system. The federal government funds the state. The but, state but, funds. Also have to, but you have to also understand they have they have quotas. They have a certain amount of people they have to have locked up at any given time, right? Right. They had they had six weeks where they couldn't lock anybody new up. Mm. They couldn't generate new revenue. Right. So, again, because remember, people have still been locked up through this entire corona stuff. Right. Oh, for sure. But you can still have a six-week block where they couldn't lock up anybody new. They couldn't bring in any new revenue. Well, this I mean, actually... Billions of loss. But, now, but actually, but your state... That's why I talked about... Huh? Well, I mean, yeah. so this is... You, you're talking about Dallas, right? Or Texas, right? So, I mean... Oh, no, I'm talking about everywhere in the U.S. Well, yeah, in, yes, in um, Illinois, it's actually worse because we've been on lockdown since February. Oh, right? Jesus. Yeah, and the courtrooms aren't even open. So whatever... Yeah, so I'm going to say this, though. Here's what I want you to do. Go down there and see if you can go either pick up a record or go file one. Right. Because they've been saying that. And I've been walking in and out of courtrooms for the past four months. Just keep that in mind. Right. I'm not telling. I'm not, and it's not just here in Texas. It's in Atlanta. It's well, the other one was in El Paso. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm speaking a little too loosely, because of course they're mm -hmm. you know having the court cases for you know certain crimes, and then they've also started doing Zoom, and I think you know Zoom is going to change a lot because, uh, and I and I didn't even mark. I didn't mark this down as a question to ask, but one of the things I don't know if you noticed or not. But one of the, at least in Illinois, one of the most important things in any case is to have a court reporter. And if you Absolutely. don't, have, yeah. So, so Zoom actually is going to kind of like uh, take care of that. But anyway, I didn't mean to break your flow. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, lady, no, no, no. She, you, you want to hit her with an aggravation fee. And, you know, she had a lawyer. He didn't do jack. And he said, why did you pay the fine? She said, why didn't I pay you? Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. But again, they're not there anymore to work for you. They're still working on the behalf of the machine. Right. And just like with um, like my brother's a cop. One of my brothers are, is a police officer. And when I went back to Georgia, he he didn't want to eat with me, which, you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, the whole the whole pretext is the conversation, because me and my other brothers, we didn't even talk about the shit that I do or police or nothing. We, we just talked about brother shit. Right. And but I know most of the because even like a lot of friends of mine are cops and we have we have the Saturday game, which we haven't played in a while. And it's called it's basically called the officer's game. My stupid ass thought it was because everybody was in the military. No, <laughs> because I'm the only one in there. That's a crook. Everybody else in there are police officers. <laughs> so, but we I had a conversation with a, a couple of them one day. But it's it's funny how we don't have those type conversations. But if we do. Is they'll pull me to the side one on one. We'll go sit down, and get something to eat or whatever, because I'm a fat boy. You know you gotta feed me. So we'll go sit down, we'll eat, and they'll ask me like, "Look, this I did this the other night. Uh, how, how how open to liability am I?" And they they consciously try to do the right thing. The problem is, I was watching like a J Cole J Cole the other night. And he gave a great explanation. He said because he was asked, "Do you believe are there any good cops?" And he said that's kind of an oxymoron simply because how can you be a good cop when the thing that you are a part of is broken? Mm. And I was like, wow. That's deep. Because when you look at 57 people that walked off the walked off a police force because they cannot use a chokehold that is technically illegal. Right. Then for two of them to come back and immediately put someone that is not aggressive in a chokehold. And get re-fired. Because I'm going to talk about that one too. Literally two of them came back. Young man is on the ground with his arms out. Mm -hmm. Cop is yelling. Because he's being cooperative. The cop is yelling. Why are you more? He's going for something. He's going for something. The young man is on the ground. He immediately when The cop yells that the second time. He goes, oh my God, honey. Film this. Because they're getting ready to kill me. Mm. Why is it that we have to fear the police officers when they're supposed to be servants? But right. they're the good. But I'm supposed to trust them and comply because they're the good guy. And here's the here's the trick to that. They went and tackled his fiance. They didn't even realize the white guy that was standing in front of them was filming them. Right, right. You know, you know, that's what I tell people uh, in this damn time. Everybody has a camera. Everybody mm -hmm. has one. And, you know, whether you're a cop or not, you have to think about your actions because when you step out in that street and you end up in an altercation or something, they're not going to catch the part where you were being the gentleman mm -hmm. where you were, you know, being nice or you were being considered. They're not going to catch that. They're going to catch you when you, you know, riding dirty for, for mm -hmm. uh, the most part. That's what they're going to here, But here's something, because I pointed this out to a guy literally right down the street at McDonald's earlier, or oh, Burger King earlier, because we were talking about that very case. And he goes, well, that should show you this, that. I said, no, no, no. I said, what I want you to understand is the weaponizing of that young man's skin. He goes, what do you mean? I said, the white guy is seen as someone that is so somebody they're not supposed to be afraid of. They paid him no attention. Right. Right. So let me get into some of the questions I wanted to ask. Go ahead. So let me see. So you said that you actually spoke for some of the people that you went to court with. So let me ask. Absolutely. Now, in Illinois, in Chicago specifically. I've done it once in Chicago. Really? Because Absolutely. to be honest with you, I actually was uh, helping my sister out with a court eviction one time. And here's, here's what you have to do. Go ahead. Remember, I tell you, everything you do has a process. Right. Because when we was when we originally started out, we used we used next friend. We, you, you use what? What's that? Ne next friend, because that's a federal right. Right. Next and, friend. Uh, Let me write this down. Yeah. Let me write this down. Next and and friend. the right, the right is someone that you've known for more than five years that and you have a legal premise and they cannot defend themselves. Damn that's, you go. So, that, so that's the easy one. But here's the here's the easy that I've used like a hundred times. And when I used it, they actually dismissed the case. Right. It's because I've even matter of fact, I'm using it right now with my sister in law. What you do, you get them to sign over 
information to you as a legal consultant. <laughs> right? Hold on. You're their legal, you're their legal consultant, right? Two, they have to file an entry of appearance as they're representing their own interests. They are not incompetent. That is a show of incomp not of, of competence. Hold on a second. I write this down. What, uh -huh. I guess I, you know what? I shouldn't write it down because I'm recording. What am I thinking? But I just don't, gotta don't, don't it. worry about it. You, it's gonna be here. Right. And then so the I'm last thing, but hold on. The first, okay. Go go forward, go back. So next friend, federal right. right. So for anybody to find in. And I actually just want to make it clear what we're talking about at this specific point in time is how one individual can stand up in court and talk about and, and, and basically help another individual in court. Historically, there are lots of laws that basically says only lawyers can practice law. But Supreme, oh, wow. So Supreme. That's the, choice, the choice of you all have to understand the choice. The and then choice. they say the choice of counsel. The choice. Remember, of counsel. remember, thirteen of those people that was dealing with the Declaration of Independence were attorneys. Right. They never used the word attorney. They used counsel. Counsel. If you look up counsel for the eighteen hundreds and seventeen hundreds, it meant one learning law. Right. That's all it means. So, so no. let me take a step back. So, next friend, which is a federal right, and this Absolutely. does what? That's something because it goes into. Two things because it goes into the um persons with disability act because once you get to a certain age you're disabled which right. is pretty much 65 right and um the amount of time you've known someone right that's their right they can't defend themselves right, right. cool and also children the easiest right. with children easiest so with children. then then you flip over because they're going to challenge that not a problem because right. then you go to they then take over their own case, which is an entry of appearance that they're going to represent their own interests. Two, right. they sign in a motion that you are a certified consultant for them. You, they've hired you as a, a legal consultant for them. Three, they then say, hey, he's going to second chair me or he's going to speak on my behalf and I can't use ineffectiveness of counsel as one of the reasons for appeal. Second, so that's the third one. The first one, next friend. The second one is that you're signing over information. No, the second, the second is the entry of appearance. Entry of so that's hold on a second. Entry so of appearance. First is next friend. Absolutely. The second is entry of, of appearance. appearance. The third then, is the third is they're going to assign you as legal counsel, but they also going to have to show that they secured your services. It can be whatever, as long as it's something of value. They spent and bought you dinner. <laughs> right. Whatever your agreement is, it is what it is. And then, then fourth, they're going to sign that they cannot use ineffectiveness of counsel as a means of overturning. Wow. This is some crazy stuff, man. Because this, everything you do has a process. Right. This, this, is, this, is, this is crazy. You know, because for years, people have basically been in a situation where they can't get as you said legal representation because some mm -hmm. people can't afford it and then you pointed out the uh the situation where not situation but you showed as an example no, how, it's the situation. right <laughs> stay still and so that one victim comes in and then they all you know basically prey on that one victim so Absolutely. this is game changing the, how in the world did you find this stuff out uh, uh okay i don't know if you remember when i first started talking i was yammering but one of the things i did everybody when i first started i told everybody i, I went in with an uzi everybody that says something crazy to me got it right like yeah, 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 yeah. I, when i went to sue child support i named the department of human human and some resources in georgia right and 13 other people mm. Simply because along the way, 13 people talked to me. Right. So I, if I went in, I went in with an Uzi. I was a street sweep. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody can get it. The problem is that becomes time consuming. That becomes stressful. And right. then these people become a part of your life. I right. can't give, I can't give me, me away like that no more. Mm. So I'm real sniper like. You can talk. Just stay over there. I'm going to give you a reason to get out of my way because if you don't, then I got to get you. Right. So I give everybody, and because, when I was doing that, I remember the book that my father gave me while he was alive. 
and it was the art of war. So I, something had me. I was sitting down in the park one day, and I just pulled it up. And I'm like, you know what? Because I'm, I'm on my iPad now. I don't use no pens and papers and all that. I'm flipping through on my iPad. And that's one of the things that Sun Tzu talked about. Give everybody a means to get out. If they don't get out, that's on them. Yeah, I'm he, surrounded. I, I'm surrounding I, I, you, I, I know, but I, you can I, leave. I've heard very well. He said the worst thing you want to do is to trap a lion. You mm-hmm. also always have to give a tiger or something like that. You always want to give. You got to give them a, a way out. A, a tiger means to to escape, or they'll fight. You know, to a vicious to the death. death. Yeah, so I get that. I get that. I actually, I actually prepared prepared a video. I I didn't get a chance to upload it because I still have to edit it, and it's talking about. And this is maybe a conversation for us another time, but it's talking about this George Floyd and social change protesting. Okay. And I ask the community, right? I ask YouTube if we should actually change our tactics, if we should just kind of stop protesting now. Because as you know, going back to Sun Tzu, and again, this is off on a tangent. I have tons of questions that I want to ask you, but okay. I just need to be open. But as a community, I think, well, first going back to Sun Tzu, he has a proverb that says, when you take a city, you want to take the city intact. Absolutely. And I think what we're risking is that we can end up in a situation where we could destroy anything, everything. We can destroy not us as you know, just African Americans, but we get. There's two drastic scenarios that could come out of this, right? And they're, they're probably not likely to happen. But one is that we can end up in a civil war, right? You know, because of the narrative that Trump is uh, pushing with the white power, and then you know the people who are policing the streets. What's going to happen? Policing the streets and in the military. Here's what here's happens here's if they make a decision to say, hey? You know, this is not right. We're going to take a stance. And then the other part of that same organization, uh, you know, continues with the stance where, you know, they're going to continue to oppress people. And then the other possibility is that we can end up in the dark ages where there's no uh, law enforcement, there's no law, so on and so forth. Because let's 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 admit you and I both agree, at least you do agree that we do need a police force. Right. Absolutely. Right. You know, so you don't want people killing you, but on the same token, you want to be protected. Anyway, that's a tangent. I just had to. Here's a, here's, but here's the thing. I'm going to build off that just a half a second because most people didn't understand what I was talking about because I said something and a couple people, they didn't put comments because that's the one thing that I love. Instead of putting comments, they'll send me an email. And I'm like, how the hell do y'all get my email? <laughs> and I forget that there's a button on my site. So they actually right. went looking for it. So they'll send me like I've got some really horrible, horrible things. At first, I thank them for watching my entire video because it's at the end of the video where I say this. But I talk about fighting and tearing up stuff in the street. That's not what we need to do, because I've constantly had the conversation with people where I talked about the fact that you see all these people that's going out. They're fighting. They're tearing shit up. I'm going to give you give you one. It was a young lady the second night of the um, stuff in Minnesota. And the young lady, she's being interviewed. And it was a white um, guy that was interviewing her. And I hate to say it that way, but it, it is what it is. So the young lady, she's screaming, she's hyped up. And at the end of her speech, she goes, and hey, y'all are allowing us to tear all this stuff up. And she caught herself. She's like, y'all are allowing us to tear this up. And then she said it one more time. She said, why are y'all allowing us to tear this up? The white <laughs> reporter looked at her and said, because it's your stuff. Right. Right. And, ah! most, and most of us don't. Most of us don't even realize that because the look on our face when he said that was like, because here's the thing. The war is on the poor. Right. If you are tearing up your target, you're tearing up your ace, your blockbusters, all of your stuff. Guess who has to pay for it if they decide to reopen? No, no use word if. If they decide to reopen, you're going to get higher prices. You're right. going to get higher right. insurance. You're going to get higher everything of right. stuff that you already can't afford. Right. So now, let's say you want the lower price stuff. You got to spend more money to go get it. Right. So who's it affecting? You, not them, because they're going to get insurance for that. And then the people that you're damaging, is it uh, so what? Because the mom and pops, they're not coming back. Right. So you take out that section. Okay, cool. Now we talk about, you got, let's say, give you average. On average, there's a million people that was out there protesting, right? Mm Mm-hmm. 
950,000 of those people will not fight back in court. Hmm. How did you come to that conclusion? That's the law of averages because less than 5% of all people fight back. Mm. Mm. <laughs> We're, the law of so averages. Again, Hold on a second. You think the law of averages. Absolutely. Because of- even... Okay. Now, I don't even like this little bastard, um, Judge Napolitan or whatever the hell his name is. He was right. he was on he was on TV. He was on what is it? Um, CNBC one day, and they were they were talking about the amount of cars that's on the road and all that other stuff. And he goes, "There are two million tickets per month that are written every month in the U.S." He said, "Less than a hundred thousand people fight back." He said, "And ninety five percent of those people win their cases. Why don't more people fight back?" I don't know why. Program not to. Program program for convenience. <gasps> and just like I talked about with this reform shit, you got six weeks of people that didn't get money, mm-hmm. right? Just as human nature has us wound up because they told us if you keep somebody in a closed environment for more than 30 days, their mindset changes. They become more aggressive. They become more agitated, which is why they have solitaires in prison and then they put them in general population. Then shortly what happens? They assault somebody. Guess right. what just happened? You, are, you unleash these police officers. I even said it in my videos. They're going to come back. And they're going to be more aggressive. They're going to be more brazen. Why? Because it's human nature. What have we witnessed? They've driven cars, not once, not twice, but three times through crowds. Right. And that, you know what, to be honest with you, I can't even understand. Uh, I can't even understand why they're doing stuff like that. And they know that they're being recorded. They're quickly to grab their guns. They're quick. They're even quicker to grab their guns. Because uh, my boy sent me a video today, which was amazing. He What's says he has a, he has a uh, no. It's a it's a video of this dude down in Florida, and it's the actual dash cam from the cop. And I'm like, how in the hell does this get put up? Dude, the cop says, "Yes, I'm pulling him over for a seatbelt." He gets out of the car, immediately grabs his gun. Get on the ground, I'm like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. So he grabs the guy. The guy, hey, the guy. He said, "Well, why'd you um pull up down here?" He said, "Cause one, I don't feel safe." He said, "Look how you act whenever I <laughs> whenever I did." stop right right. and i'm thinking to myself okay must maybe he saw something that i didn't see and he says yeah i just pulled you over for a seatbelt what a seatbelt ticket or a seatbelt stop caused this police officer to jump out of his car hollering and screaming pointing his gun and putting somebody in handcuffs right what part of that is police procedure now when we talk about police reform and defunding the problem is Nobody has a realistic plan on how to defund. Nobody has a plan on where this asset allocation should be. Nobody has done that. And then every package that has been presented for reform or reformation, none of them has anything to do with their training. Training is their problem. That's the issue we have with every one of them because they are horribly trained. And even when you talk about these police officers and these police unions, I told you at the beginning of this, I'm having more problems with police unions than I am police officers because the police unions are protecting these fuck boys and they are allowing this crap to happen. They don't want these kids punished. And that's exactly what they are, because when you have a child that does something crazy, the first thing the child does is I need to see where the line at. The problem is they keep moving the line. Right. But now that people are getting aggravated, it's the people's fault. Just like that bastard in Arizona, whenever she put up, I, I got deleted off Twitter. Because I'm not sure if you remember this. The last 4th of July. Okay. Five officers go into a Starbucks in um, Mesa, Arizona. Okay. Now, keep in mind, I had just left through Mesa. Mm. I had picked up a paper and everything. Mm. So, while down there, the Starbucks manager said, hey, y'all are making a couple of the customers uncomfortable. Could you move to this table over here or over in this area? Or could you sit outside? Or could you, do you guys mind getting your coffee and leaving? Now, the officers got up. You know what? We'll go ahead and go since we're making multiple people uncomfortable. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't no crooks in there. It was women. A bunch of women. Wasn't no dudes. Now, the police commissioner goes, that is a horrible way to treat the police officers. Right. And, th- and they are our vets. My response to him was, Maybe if they stop killing somebody every five days, <laughs> people will be comfortable around them. Right. I said, and then my next tweet, because he responded to, I can't remember what he responded with. I said, well, if I, I said, I know I am huge and I am not a nice smiling person. So I know I have to do other things to allow people to be comfortable around me. 
Maybe your police officer should not grab their pistols when they're sitting down drinking coffee. Right. And people will be more comfortable around them. So it then gets retweeted. And then the guy goes, well, the police officers aren't doing this. The police officers aren't doing that. The chief of Phoenix, she types in, it's the police, it's the citizens fault that we're shooting them so much. The, it's the people fault. So right. a young man types in, I guess it was the 14 year old's fault for being on the playground when he got shot in the head by the police officer. Wow. I got deleted because they said I was har- harassing the police. Well, you know what? Honestly, I think what happened is that uh, they, they, you know, because you, you can you can report you know abuse, and they probably use their um, police. You know, the police you know, they, they they use their leverage to try to get you because that happened to me. That happened to me because I, I I'm on Twitter, and I was originally on Twitter as the non lawyer, and one of the things that I don't like in this whole Me Too movement is that men can easily lose everything on a mere accusation. Absolutely. So I did a, a video about this one um, musician who actually accused her producer of rape, right? Wow. Yeah. And and and, and from my from my from my investigation and my investigation was really light. I just read a bunch of articles and read on YouTube on the, on the internet and I did a little background search. Uh, and then when you look at the actual story, I didn't see anything in the story that basically said that, that, that would make me believe that she was raped. And to me, it just seemed like what she was trying to do is she was trying to get this bandwagon started right. so that all these people could come out and basically accuse him of rape. And then she went to Katy Perry and she got tried to get uh, Katy Perry to co-sign and Katy Perry wouldn't co-sign. So, I got on her about it. You know, Twitter is a, is, is a tool that, you know, the free world uses. And I think I may have said something like, well, hey, if he raped you, did, didn't you go to the police? You know, or did you go? And, and then everyone comes out to protect her. And I'm like, well, no, she should have went to the police. She should have, you know, did, you know, a rape kit, you know, so on and so forth. And then, you know, right after that, my account is deleted. I didn't say mm-hmm. anything bad. You know, other mm-hmm. than just ask questions, you know, so Twitter is just kind of funny because I think sometimes it becomes so uh, political that, you know, they will delete your account. Uh, and I think one of the reasons they deleted my account is because, as you notice right now, I don't I never show my face. Uh-huh. Some people don't like that. You know, that's my thing. My channel is about that's law. <laughs> that's my thing. My, 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 my content is about law. It's not about me as an individual. And then on top of that, I have a personal life. I don't want to be able to do. I mean, you're brave and I, I, I give take my hat off to you. I love your channel. I like the work with, that you do. But I have a career. I, I do other things. And I don't want to put my all my personal stuff in jeopardy. Absolutely. Because of me exercising free speech on the internet. Now, Absolutely. with that in now, mind, hold on, I'm gonna say something too. It's okay. not necessarily being brave, but again, you know, the one thing I always tell tell my kids is know thyself. Right. And I also understand perception about me. Right. Dude, I'm not a small guy. Nobody really wants to tussle. However, I don't worry about the tussle. It's the extra stuff that comes along with it because I've actually been again. I don't have a lot of people that follow me. Right. However, I've been called out a couple times at airports. Ooh, can I get a picture? And like, it's to me, I'm like, dude, it's YouTube. I'm like, <laughs> it is what it is. But you got really good time, content. I'll tell you that right, off, right off the bat. Go ahead. I appreciate it, but for me, I understand what it is because just like I know that you will never see this entire room. Right. I put up where I'm at, but generally, it's it is what it is. It's, it's a vague area. Right. And, you know, generally, I, uh, most of the time, if you look at the videos, other than at the Marriott, you know, I've actually had somebody show up at the Marriott, like, if they kept going there until I came there one day. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, let me stop doing that. Right. <laughs> so, and it's, and it, well, it's, it's, it's not, I'm not really just concerned about that. I'm really no. just concerned. I'm not concerned about bringing people in my home. I'm more concerned about my personal life. But go ahead. Oh, but see, me, my personal life, this is my personal life. I don't. Right, I, you know, I've, I've I've been gave like I said, I retired three years ago. Right, so, right. Yeah, this is my personal life. I've I ran out of fucks to give, and <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> let me ask you a question. So you sued child support? Absolutely. So tell us about that, and tell us how it went. 
Okay, the the one thing I want to want people to know is there's a reason I tell people to sue people in their personal capacity. Right. Because if you sue a cop in their personal capacity, what do you mean? Because I I don't sue them. I don't sue them as a government agent because once they violate, they're no longer a government agent. The instant they violate, they're no longer a government agent. Wow. So you're suing them in their personal capacity, and And when they start that jump, because absolutely. That's why I don't, I don't. That's why I don't talk about a whole bunch of qualified immunity because I don't need to. Right. That's interesting. That's, that's, that's why, very interesting. Because I'll tell people. I say, quit going after 1983. You don't need it. Wow. You need civil rights. Because that's what it is. It's a federal civil rights violation. Most people are hung up. Oh, it's because I'm not black. Guess what? It doesn't matter. So I say, was was it a constitutional violation? Yes. Guess what? It's a civil rights violation. Mm. Like. But again, it's because we're being programmed to look at things a certain way and we're not reading. Right. We're not actually under. And then when we read something, we don't understand how to apply it. Mm-hmm. But again, that's something that came with, you know, a whole bunch of trial and retrying and people like, you know, I've been in sales a long time. So mm-hmm. one of the things I had to develop was the art to listen mm-hmm. because everybody wants to be sold. You mm-hmm. have to listen to what they're trying to tell you so you can sell them. And a lot of times, if you listen at what a judge says, because the law is exact, they deal with precise words that have precise meaning. They'll say things and you'll be like, oh, he ain't even on my side. And then you go back and you replay it and be like, oh. Because a lot of times people tell me, oh, the judge said this. And I'll be like, oh, no, he was saying this. They're like, what? How did you decode that? And then I'll just like, okay, he can't do this. He can't do that. This is what he can do. (laughs) That's not a big box. That's why last night when you were like, oh, well, no, you 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 got to do this. You got. And then when you I guarantee you went, went back, you were like, I, went back, oh, I read it. You were like, I, went back oh, and I read it. I was like, <laughs> like what the fuck I said, I said, oh, I thought this dude was a man. This dude is a fraud. You can't sue no goddamn judge. And I wanted to say that. I mm-hmm. said, you know, you, you, you got to be careful how you talk to people. I said, I, let me sugar. I don't, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Right. right. But, you know, and that's the one thing I love about it. Nobody has to sugarcoat because just like I, t- I, I mentioned Dex more than anybody else. Dexter, get yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Dexter got on my nerves. It's Dexter, exactly. He's a dude. He like he still watches, he still follows, or whatever. He donates and all the other stuff. Okay. But the funniest thing is that um, Dexter, I think the first year and a half I was doing videos. Dexter would be all in the chat, all in the comments, and he'd be I'm like, "Dude, would you stop?" Like, right, right. Like, get over yourself. And then I realized what he was doing. He wanted me to elaborate on stuff. So he would put that up there to kind of like, you know, and it was an iron sharpened iron. And it was also a reinforcement of, yeah, he know what he's talking about. Right. So once I realized that's what he was doing, I was like, oh, OK. Right. So I don't mind any. Don't ever. You don't ever. Have, I'm a grown man. You're a grown person. We, I, guess what? If I ever see you, we ain't going to fight. Right, right, right. No, you know what? No, man, I, 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 don't, not everybody, I don't mind. I don't mind not everybody is like you, though, because what I try to do, especially on the internet, right? Yeah. Because, okay, so I'm not even going to throw any names out there, but yeah. you have other people that are in this arena, and I'm surprised you haven't really met them yet, right? And most of the people that I know in this arena, in the arena is associated in the R. Kelly space, right? Yeah. You know, so what I don't want to do is have a feud with somebody because life is too short. I don't want my channel to be about, oh, well, this person said this, and then I have to worry about what this person is trying to do to my reputation, my image. I don't have time for that. You, you see what I'm saying? And, you know, just in general, when I when I, when I I try to speak to people, I don't want them to misinterpret what I'm trying to say, and I don't want the energy to be taken away from the actual, uh, you know, context, the actual topic, right? You know, so when you, when you start talking about suing a lawyer, Basically, I was thrown aback. I'm like, you can never sue a lawyer. Then I noticed when I actually read the case again, it's uh, 242, the companion statute, which is a criminal component (laughs) that allows you to sue, not lawyer, judge. We start suing a judge. So 242 is the criminal companion of uh, 1983. But let's Mm -hmm. go back. So suing the child support people, tell us about that. What happened was... um... When I got I got bonded out from the Rico trial or Rico case, 
I was staying with my grandmother because that was pretty much where I had to go. Where I agreed I'd stay at, which, you know, for the most part, that's where I was at anyway. Right. Um, so we were, I'm sitting there, I get a letter. I'm like, what the hell? $60,000 in child support? Like, what the fuck are they talking about? Damn. So I go up there. Now, here's the tee hee. I go up there with my daughter, the one they say I owe $60,000 for. Mm. So while I'm sitting in there, I was like, yeah, I need to speak to a director or something or whatever. So lady, the lady, the lady comes out and she's talking. She's oh well, you you this and you that. I said, oh, oh, oh calm down. Let's let's stop that. I said, because I'm a grown person. You're not going to talk to me like that. Right. Just go give me the goddamn paper and go get your boss. And right. she's like, oh no, I'm the one in charge. Blah blah blah. I said, cool. Give me a card. So she goes to talking, and then I'm looking at this thing. I said, I said, I said, don't y'all have an itemized? I said because on here it says I made a payment. When did I make you a payment? Because I didn't even know this existed. Right. So the lady goes, oh, well, you a real deadbeat. But again, hand me the paperwork. I don't, we don't even need to talk. So then she um, she says something else to me. Now, again, 6'4", at that time, I was like 3'10", 3'20". So I stand up, and I stand in the chair. Right. Keep in mind, 6'4", 300-plus pounds. I'm angry. I look like this. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm in a chair yelling. Right. In child support. Right. Oh, they coming to get your ass. <laughs> so, so, so there's about 15 cops for this so, moment. Here's, here's the crazy part. So the people come out the back. Nobody's running up to me. Just so happened one of the one of the chicks that worked there, she's actually she's actually like one of the big sisters from the neighborhood or whatever. She's like, you don't get your big ass off that chair, calm down. <laughs> right. So, you know, I calmed down enough. She hands me the paper. And it shows that there was a payment that was made to my daughter. I said, I start laughing. I hand her the paper. And she's like, yeah, see, dead beat this dead. I was okay, cool. I turn around, look at my daughter. I said, have you ever received a payment from me? Right. For that amount. And she goes, never. I was like, okay, great. How did y'all get a payment? And who did you send it to? Right. Now everybody's quiet. Right. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I said, so now again. So, so hold on a second. The issue is that you're arguing that you never paid them any money? I'm arguing that I was never on child support. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, so she goes, I said, and then I said, hey, give me the default judgment. Right. They go and hand me this sheet of paper, and I could not stop laughing. Right. Because the whole time, all these people are walking by saying little snide shit, and I'm like, yeah, give me your card. Give me your card. Give me your card. So I got like, I got a, I got a stack. I got a playing card deck worth of cards. Right. So they come over there and she hands me, she finally hands me the paper because I've been sitting in there for an hour and I'm loud. Right. I was typically, I was a typical dude at that point. I was hood as shit at that point in a suit and tie. Right. So she comes over, she hands it to me, and I fall out of the chair laughing. I almost peed on myself laughing. Right. Well, <laughs> why were you laughing? What is so funny? I said, Did you notice that on this order, I didn't sign it, the right. attorney didn't sign it. The judge didn't sign it, but y'all got it filed and stamped. How is that possible? Right. I said, don't worry about it. We'll have a conversation in court about it. Right. So they tried to send me another notice right. for a court hearing that was in state court. Right. I, I politely sent it back because most people don't understand the verbiage of contracts. I told I said, you do realize this original. I said, because of this order. If there is a standing order that is legitimate, you just void the contract because you're participating in voluntary servitude because you're forcing me to pay you and you're putting my liberty at risk for a contract. Right. They resend me another order that has no risk of liberty. <laughs> so the problem is... They so they're sending you what's, what's called administrative reviews. Absolutely. Right. So what happens is I then... All these people I got cards from I'm suing them in their individual capacity. I send a nice little letter up, uh, um, complaint up to um, Atlanta because at the time that's where it was at. I was in Augusta, so I go to, I go to the courthouse in Augusta because that's where the building is. Right. That's where all the people I'm suing are. Right. That's where the case originated from. So I file it and I go to the um, courthouse, the federal court building. While I'm in there, the state's attorney dude is in there. So when he was like, well, what is this? I said, well, I'm filing this against child support. So he takes a look at what I'm filing. He goes, 
He said, yeah, I want to go with you. I want to help you um, hand these out. So <laughs> we, go back, we go back and we hand out the complaints. Yes. So we go back and we're handing out these complaints. All right. So it's it's funny because the lady goes, well, you can't sue us because of this. I said, absolutely, I can. I said, because y'all didn't file your administrative duties. Uh. That's why I tell people you can't argue against you. Right. I know your process better than you do. Right, right. You follow your duties. Right. And so I let that one drag on because um, probably two weeks later, the um, the the human resources, blah, 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 in Atlanta gave me a number. They were like, look, we put you in our system. You're good. We're not bothering you. You don't owe us nothing. Right. They gave, they gave me an actual number. So if you to go type my number, my name in or whatever, a number pops up. Right. So they fold it. They fold yeah. it. Yeah. They were like, yeah. They threw everybody else under the bus. Right. That's what happens to police officers when you sue them in their personal capacity. They can't go to the police union because the police union is no longer protecting off hmm. um, John, Dennis Johnson. They were protect, protecting, protecting Officer Johnson. And, and you know what? I actually read something else. I forget which case it is, but there was one case where a guy was actually driving for the state of Illinois and he gets into that into an accident. So the plaintiff actually tries to sue this guy. No, he tries to sue the state. And then the state said, well, he didn't owe the, uh, the state of Illinois didn't owe you any duty. Absolutely. The driver owed you a duty because the driver, although employed by the state of Illinois, he has the duty of every other citizen to be basically careful on the world. There was some verbiage like that. It's called the duty of care. Duty of care. There you go. I've actually hey, talked hey, about hey. that in my videos. Right. Police officers have a duty of care. Right. But again, we don't understand our quote unquote federal rights, what the federal restrictions on the government are. Most right. of us don't. And if they do know them, they don't know, understand how they're applied because most of the people are talking that talk about this are talking about theory. They've never sued anybody. They've never gone after anybody. And even whenever I do it, it's so you can leave me the fuck alone. That's it. I just don't want to bother me. You got and to leave him way out. You got to leave him way out. And here's the great part. When I found out that judges want you to win. Some I of them do. Win. Not all of them. Some of them do. So, so let me say this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The ones that don't want you to win are the ones that aren't judges. <laughs> I'll let you finish talking. I'll, 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 I'll say what I'm going to say. Yeah, because yeah, um, the, the, the magistrates, they're not judges anyway. Nobody cares about them. Those are the ones that are in traffic court because the only reason they're there is for the um, traffic violations. That's it. Right. They're, they're worthless. Signing warrants and traffic court. That's it. Right. Well, let me, let me say this. Some judges, they get excited because they see people coming in and they see that these people are learning the law and the judge loves the law. Some judges love the law. They love the cons. They, they love what law contributes to society. Totally. They're in it 100%. So but, in their day to day, yeah. boring life, finally, they see someone with fresh blood. And they see someone genuinely learning the law and they see someone trying to apply the law. That particular judge, the, the judge that cares, yes, he wants to see you win. I've come across judges like that. They even throw you hints. Absolutely. They, 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 go, they will go, well, according to, you know, the Civil Rights Act or whatever. They'll throw breadcrumbs out there for you. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, you have just like, you know, with, with Jedi's, you have, you know, Sith Lords and you have Jedi, Lord. you have, you know, judges that I would probably consider I'm still, I'm still like a puppy just shaking my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got some judges <laughs> that are upset that you're not paying one of their buddies to basically Absolutely. represent you so they can make money off of you. And then they feel disgusted that you're coming in trying to basically uh, you know, practice law, and when they spent hundreds of thousand of dollars to go to law school, they, so they they, those are, and those you do have those, right? And see, when I, I notice those up front because they'll let you know that. Because again, I, <laughs> let, let me back up a little bit because they think you're trying to circumvent the system, 
Right. But the problem is when they see that you know what you're doing, they want to they want to look at some other stuff. But right. here's here, here's a conversation. Um, I wonder was it last March? So I want to say March 2019. I went to a little radio show uh, with CNN that was in the CNN building or whatever, and it was an hour long show. And the pro- the problem was we showed up late. <laughs> we thought it was gonna be later, but we were actually late to the um to the oh so the show started late as hell. And it was six of us. We all supposed to have equal time speaking. Nobody told me what I was supposed to talk about. Right. So I ended up talking for like 40 minutes. Right. So when we were leaving, they were giving me all kind of offers and all kind of crazy stuff. So I, okay, no, yeah, all right, we'll talk about it, whatever. So my boy, he goes, hey. He said, I got this guy. He said, this is the guy I was telling you about. Now, the guy that he sits down with me, he's a Harvard graduate. He had literally just passed the bar. Mm. So we go to talking and he starts testing me to see if I know what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm laughing because I, it's funny because I know what he's doing mm. because he's like, yeah, I just spent six years doing this shit. You can't know this shit. Right, so, right. We're, so we're talking and whatever. <laughs> and then, then he said, well, what would you do in this situation? Right. So I started giving it to him and he, he posed me the situation just like you just did as far as, what would you do if a judge is biased towards you? I'm like, great, glad you did that. I would do this, that, that, and third. And he looks at me, he goes, hey, stop. He turns around, looks at my boy, he said, yeah, he the real deal. He said, because he's talking about procedures on a level that they don't teach at Harvard. Mm. And the only reason I have that is simply because I've done it so many times and I've listened to the people that have already paid the dues to right. get Because even today, I'll go and look at some. I watch some. Cause I, my dumb ass watch court TV sometimes. Right. Like <laughs> that's the most boring <laughs> thing ever. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, he's what? Right. Why right. You that? <laughs> and I'm so happy that sometimes I'll go back and I'll Google it, and then it'll be on YouTube. I'm like, okay, let me. Okay, why did he say that? And I'll sit there and watch it because the one thing I know is the nature of the beast never changes. Right. Like the, the step, and that's why I tell everybody what I'm teaching on my channel is not just going to work in Georgia. It's not just going to work in Texas. Not just going to work in. Because you talk about a lot of federal stuff. Absolutely. Because understand that everything that they're doing is a guideline of federal law. Mm-hmm. Everybody's supposed to practice federal. So when it's not federal, you're not dealing in law. Right. You're practicing policy. Because even if state quote unquote law, doesn't coincide with federal law, it's void. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even apply. Mm. That's why state codes and ordinances change from county to county. Why? Because they're public safety issues. Mm. So what? Because so, just like, just to give you a great example, we have some dumbass, what I would call safety issues in El Paso. Mm. None of them apply here in Houston. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because again, We've got a certain way we can carry our guns in El Paso. We got to carry them a little different out here in Houston. Mm. Same gun, same person. State to state, the laws are different. Yeah, it's different. County, to ca- county to county, they're different. Wow. But the law doesn't change. It's the state ordinances because the safety issues change. That's where, And that's where I try to kind of reinforce to everybody. Because even, like, it could be some of the most minute stuff. It's just enforced differently because there's a more of abundance here than it is there. It's right. more of a reason for it here than it is somewhere else. Right. And hell, even in Georgia, it's completely different than it is here in Texas. So it's, it's understanding that. But right. everything I teach on my channel for Georgia, you can apply it in Georgia, Texas, Illinois, Florida. Because again, I'm winning cases in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, New York, Cali. And, and, and you know what? Really? One of the things that the one of the things I like about your channel is that you are basically blowing my mind every single time I go to your channel. Really? Like, like I said, because you you did do a video on uh, attorneys representing you and all this stuff, and you talked about how it's a myth of how you can't have someone else going to court, right. and basically, and you just explained that here. And it's like each time I talk to you, 
you you just basically you know shatter my concept of reality. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what the fuck is this motherfucker talking about? You know, I said, man, that's practicing law without a license. I ain't gonna watch this. I'm gonna click off for this video, or whatever. And now I'm sitting here talking to you, and you just hit me with this uh, next to friend entry of appearance, you know, so on and so forth. So this is basically blowing my mind, right? And so, here's the great part about it: everything I gave you can go look up. Yeah, I know, I know. By this, by, by this, you know, at this point in time, I'm definitely going to look those up because I want to be able to get to the point of where I could potentially use it, right? Absolutely. I, I want to get to the point where I can tell other people how to use it. So I'm definitely looking those up. But on the uh, credibility level, you're credible. You know what I mean? I made a mistake when I made put that comment on your channel. I was like, don't ever look at it as a mistake because again right. the same thing that you saw other people saw right the same question you had you had the nuts to put it up there because i'm gonna tell you what happened well, I, had it. Nuts. I, I, I was just i i couldn't like like i felt like i had to put it up there but go ahead right and see and there are other people that won't type it right but they'll have that question later it'll be stuck in their head they just don't want to ask it but i asked the person because I, I used to have every sunday i would have um a call in, everybody call in, ask questions. Well, I I had one of my friends. I was like, dude, you used to call in all the time or whatever, or have a question. Why isn't you? Why aren't you doing that anymore? He said, dude, you put your people on blast. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you did two whole videos on a dude that had a question in the comment section. Right, right. <laughs> he, he never said put anything in the comment section. <laughs> I was like, but it was a it was a it was a real question. Right. Like, I cause see what I've learned is. If you go look at my first couple of videos, the comments seem horrible. Right. Because my ex will read my comments and be like, oh my God, your comments are so negative. I never saw them that way. Because mm -hmm. even when um the little bastard chick, I forgot her name, because she's actually changed her name on YouTube because she pissed me off. I told her, I said, you know what? You're so irrelevant when you type in your name looking for you. They My videos pop up. So that's why I learned about you. But, See, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't get into stuff like that. I try to keep my stuff and the reason I do this is because I really want to focus on the content. And right. the other reason is, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't really have a personality. You know what I mean? I okay. was like always one of those kids that focused on their books. They went to school. They did everything A and B. They didn't get into no trouble. Had to run away from bullies. That's who I am, right? Oh. You know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to loosen up a little bit now. But, you know, honestly, on, on the Internet, I stay away from it. I'm not saying that you should, you should, you know, you, you, you do you, but I don't do that stuff like that, but go ahead. But see, again, what I have to do a lot of times is I'll, I'll leave comments without a, a response for shit months because I want to understand where it is the person's coming from. If I, if I take it negatively, it means like they said some real crazy shit. But right. even like whenever she put up her comment, I didn't take it as a negative response. But what I took as a negative thing from her was her response to me putting her comment up. Like, right. okay, you think this, this is why I have it. And I always tell people, this is why I have a channel. And I put up the actual law that goes against what she said. Right. So then that pissed her off because, oh, you're trying to put me on blast. No, I'm not putting you on blast. You said it. Right. That's why I put your comment up. Right. So, so now whenever I do it, I just put anonymous. Right. Uh, you know, it's anonymous, whatever. It's hurting everybody's feelings. But anyway, so, but at the end of the day, your question has relevance. Your question right. has value. Because somebody else has that same question. That's why I tell people, even leave your snide remarks. Because, like I said at the beginning, when I started this, my I would get comments. And my ex was like, oh, my God, these, these comments are horrible. And I was like, no, nah, they're telling me how to improve my shit. Right. For sure. Like, my, my, my sound quality was trash. Um, hell, my video quality was trash. The stuff that I talked about, I mumbled through. And I had like, like you said, I had zero personality. There was nothing that went along with it. There was because again, I was reading something, but I wasn't giving you me. Right. And as I, know all, along, I know all about that. Because uh, see, like now as it goes along, shit, why am I not giving you me? The only thing I don't want to do is because I've even done this a couple of times. I even have videos up where I've given you like too much of me. Because my <laughs> thing is, I'm still, I, I still. I still suffer from, I'll say I have a have a touch of PTSD because mm -hmm. of the amount of times I've been thrown to the ground with a knee in my back and a gun to the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And thank you to Cab County. 
but and I still like I can't watch a lot of videos like the video that my boy sent me with the cop that he pulls his gun out he's doing all that screaming and then he goes well I pulled you over for a seatbelt like what are you serious mm. I had to stop watching it right there and I watch I'll finish watching it later but that drives me crazy that in, that infuriates me because mm. even having a conversation a conversation because just like I said most of, most of my partners are cops so we're going home one day. And I was telling him about the lady um, who was pulled over at the DUI stop, right? Mm -hmm. Talked about how a male officer searched her mm -hmm. and pushed her all up, you know, going all up her dress <laughs> while his partner's there. Hey, he trying to find so that. She got, so she's trying to scream. She's like, hold on, this female supposed to be searching me. What are you doing? Right. His partner allowed that shit to go on. Right. When they got to the police station. She filed a complaint. The sergeant told her, his sergeant, you know how these young guys are. They're not very skilled in what they're doing. And he's just trying to, what did she, what did she use? It was, a, it was something stupid. But they excused his action instead of changing his behavior. You got to sue him. That's the only way and you can change. But here's, but here's the thing, though. She's not suing, but she was actually pro. She, will be, she was one of those people prior to that. And here's the crazier part. She wasn't even drunk. Mm. She mm. wasn't drunk. Right. But that put a horrible taste in her mouth towards police. So now she hates all police and she's also scared of them. Because mm. of one person. And then you don't correct his behavior. Because just like I told my boys, I have a partner of mine and, you know, Bree gets on my nerves. I'm going to say his name, Bree. Bree gets on my goddamn nerves. And I do mean that the exact way I say that. I met Bree when I first got to El Paso. Bree is the reason I tolerate Bree is because Bree is me when I was in my twenties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I understand how to deal with him, but like everybody was like, "Y'all are real close friends." I was like, "No." The reason why we play basketball together and we're a package deal is because I've been playing ball with Bree since I got here, and I know Bree wants to win just as much as I do. Bree's going to do what's necessary to win just as much as I will. So we're on the same page as that. I know what he brings to the table. The boy has ice water in his veins. He don't shoot much, but when he does, he makes it count. Mm -hmm. That's the guy I want on my team. I've seen him hit multiple game winners, but that's the guy I want. Now, we'll sit here and have hollering and screaming matches during the game. We've even gotten to the point where me and him pushed each other. And we, went, we were half-ass tussling. And went right back out there. As soon as the game was over, we high-fiving each other, riding off together. And everybody was like, okay, what is wrong with you? And I was like, at the end of the day, we have to be able to correct one another's behavior because if Bree can't correct my behavior, does Bree care about me? If I can't correct Bree's behavior, do I care about Bree? Mm. That's the problem what's, that we have with the, uh, What's the saying? I don't know if it's actually a saying, but you know, it's it's almost like if you had a booger on your nose, would, would a friend tell you that you have a booger on your nose? Absolutely. You, know I mean? you better tell me. Right. right. <laughs> Somebody that don't like you, they're not going to tell you because they want you to walk around looking stupid. Absolutely. Because you know what? It's so funny because my girl, we were sitting down and she was like, you know what? You are absolutely my dog. Because I always mess with her because when she puts lipstick on, a lot of times she's doing it in the car. Right. I'm like, what are you doing? Eating the lipstick? And she was like, you know, I want to punch you in the face. But right. everybody else will let me just leave the lipstick on my teeth. Right. <laughs> like, you know, it's some it's some it's some accidental stuff, but it happens. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it, who am I not to, not to say anything? Just gonna let her ride around with lipstick on her teeth. Right. Who does that? You know, but can well, I it, can it, I say I love you if I'm gonna let you ride around like that? It. There's two types that will do it. One type of person that will do it is is someone who's kind of afraid to let you know. Right, because they, they feel they don't have a really good relationship with you and they're afraid of the pre repercussions. And then there's the people who don't like you and they want to, you know, let you look that way so they can tell everybody how you look. Yes, so she walked around right with a book on her face all day. <laughs> right, right, right. So, one more question before we end this live. Absolutely. So, basically, when you help someone out and you're coming on to the team fresh for the first time, what are some of the first moves you make when you're helping a person out? Discover. Discover. I don't know, oh, what, I don't know what I'm dealing with. 
You want to know what you're dealing with. And a lot of people would think that you get discovery automatically. Hell no. And then really? you don't get it detailed. I have a, I have a, um, actually I did a, I did a Patreon. I did a couple other videos. Well, you know, if you watch enough of my discovery videos, you'll have the whole package because it's 14 things that's supposed to be in discovery. Mm, what's um, Give us a few of them. Um, you know, the easy is the warrant application and the warrant itself for mm -hmm. either arrest or search or both. Right. Um, unless you gave consent. Right. Um, you want the stop itself. You want the police reports. Mm. Because what happens is I had a dude that went in the comment section. He goes, hold on. Did you say on every stop that there is an audio of police? Absolutely. Mm. Because they have to radio to somebody that they are making a stop. Wow. Wow. So you make sure you ask for a copy of that. Because they will not give it to you unless you ask for it. And then when wow. they give it to you, unless it's from a third party, it's not coming. But mean? the whole point is... I was saying, what do you mean? They give it to you, but it's not coming. I'm going I'm to give you, give you an example. <laughs> My friend of mine, he was stopped white guy and i mean I, I i'm saying it because i know a lot of people are gonna be like oh well he had to be something no no white guy will stop right so clean cut you know just 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 an everyday old white guy mm. so he gets stopped and he's one of those well okay yeah the police are good and no and that's why i always tell people <laughs> the police and the justice system is not for the innocent right because they're amazed whenever they see stuff that i say happen oh well hold oh. on a second hold on a second okay I mean, so you say so much man and it's like there there's a opportunity to have a whole nother uh live well, we, session. Look like we can do it again then right right no for sure <laughs> but let's, let me i'm gonna make note of this but i want to put this in your mind who does the police serve and protect do the police don't answer but this is potentially another <laughs> uh, live session are, when the police say they're serving and protecting you, are they serving? I'm sorry. When police say they serve and protect, when you see that logo on their car or van, is that for you as an individual, as a public? Who do they serve and protect? But anyway, finish your story. Don't even answer that. Okay. Because <laughs> because I already have some things to say. Because I okay. had this because okay. I had this conversation with my boy. It wasn't alive. And I actually did some reading. I was like, damn, this shit is this shit is cold. Yeah. This shit is cold. But go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so he gets stopped. Yeah. And he's he's actually a paralegal. Right. So he goes, Well, what should I do first? He said, I'm I'm just curious. What would you do? I said, I'll ask for discovery. And I, I send him a list of discovery. He goes, I've he said, I've actually worked in the DA's office. I've never seen anybody ask for discovery this thorough. I said, one, because I know they're not gonna turn up. Right. He goes, and, what? and if they don't turn it over, then the case is that, dismissed. Exactly. Because see, now I have a different thing to argue. Right. So, and again, what I tell people is I go for the war. I'm not in this for a battle. I'm in it for the war. And unfortunately, your preliminary, that's a battle. The actual wadir, that's a battle. The actual trial is still a battle. Right. You don't win the war until you get what you're looking for. Right. So, Understanding that I'm setting up, you, you, you said it in the voir dire? huh? You, you participated in the voir dire? Yeah, I picked voir dire. I represent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I watch if you watch one of my first couple videos, I actually that's me in the courtroom crossing right. people, right? Me and my brother Alicia, well, we picked voir dire. Damn, yeah, because here's Yo, I'm, gonna you, give, I'm gonna give you, a tea, I'm gonna give you a tee he on this too. Because you have, I always talk about the story. Oh, let me finish this real quick, and then I'll All get right, to go it. ahead. Okay, so he's and I, like I said, the, the innocent is not for our justice system. It's not for them because it's 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 amazing at how what we're doing or what happens to them is is foreign because that's not what they're expecting. They're like, because I did the right things. Why did this happen? And nobody gives a shit about that mm. because you want the truth. You know, read something because it's not going to be at church either. Mm. But we were um he. He goes, well, I've never seen a, a discovery motion this thorough. So he said, well, I'm going fi to file it anyway. So they sent him the video and the body cam footage. So you filed a motion for discovery? 
Absolutely. I gave him the most thorough motion of discovery he's ever seen, and he's worked as a DA assistant. Right. So, so what's in the motion of discovery? Not to interrupt your flow, but like what's actually in it? You just simply ask. How about no, no? How about we'll we'll do that tomorrow? Okay, we'll cool. Tomorrow. No, maybe not tomorrow, but we'll, we'll, listen we'll, next we'll do it on the next one. I'll make sure I have that. In okay, front go ahead, go ahead. So he gets he gets a copy of the body cam, and he gets a copy of the audio. Now, keep in mind, he was on this stop for thirty minutes. Mm. Guess how long the video was? How long? Eighteen seconds. Damn. <laughs> so you missing footage, baby. Hold on. Guess how long, how much audio he actually had that he could understand? How much? Three seconds. Damn. So when he got there, he told the DA, he said, oh, no, y'all gave us some stuff to scramble. Said, right. Nope, that's it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so, again, there you, got, you can ask for it, but it's again, <laughs> they're not trying to give you that mess. They don't want you to win. Right. You got a level playing field. But what did you ask me that I want to give you an answer to? Uh, you know, I man, there, there's so much stuff for us to talk about. Um, I, uh, I, I, want, I want to rewind it real quick. Let me go back. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, I, I think I ask a lot, but uh, we're not going to talk about who the police serves and protects. No. I'm going to leave that for another video. Uh, like I said, I did read, because me and my buddy had a conversation about it. And, you know, he basically said the police aren't there to serve and protect you. Ask him who they work for. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> but here's, here's the easy, because I actually I actually brought it up one day, and I think I was curious. I said, anybody that still has serve and protect on their police officer, you know, take a picture of it and send it to me. And I had, oh, like, Chicago does. Chicago. I had, and I had people um, send me pictures from all over the country where they still had serve and protect um, on their cars. Right. Now, I actually thought that was phenomenal because I hadn't seen one. And oh, then they told me they, they don't like, have oh, it in Atlanta. And oh, uh, hold on. oh hell no, they don't have it in Atlanta. But <laughs> but when I went to El Paso, they were like, uh, yeah, some of the cars still do it. And I'm like, oh okay. So when I they actually showed me over there, because a lot of my friends are El Paso Police Department um, officers. So it is what it is. I've even got some friends down there in Dallas. Um. You know what? Because I have, I've, I have, I've been having. Um, I guess cops don't aggre- uh, are not as aggressive with me anymore. I they guess. Great are you now? They, so, should they, you know, they're probably not going to be unnecessarily aggressive with anybody uh, anytime soon because all the stuff that's going on. Oh, you, you might want to watch that. Right. You wa- might want to watch that. But yeah. uh, I am going to say because if anybody's riding around, if you're still getting behind the wheel of a car and you don't have a dash camera. Shame on you. Right. Because I've actually, I've got a couple videos up where I do a good, better, and best. If you can afford the best, get the best. It's like 100, maybe 200 bucks. Mm. But it's 4K, it's crystal clear audio, and you don't have to worry about anybody touching it. Because mm. even if they cut it off, it goes to the cloud. They can't right. believe it. Right. But the good, it's $30. Right. And, you know, you can turn it on without doing a whole lot of reaching. Hit your cell phone and then just put your hands up. Right. And... <clears throat> Because it's even a video I was going to do. Um, I've been waiting for the time. I think I recorded maybe a year ago. And it was um, it was a video talking about how people are being killed because their cell phones look like a quote-unquote gun. Right. And I have a video of a police officer saying there's no way in hell you can mistake a cell phone for a gun. Wow. Wow. Crazy stuff. So... You know what, man? I'm just going to say it's been a pleasure to, uh, talking to you. Absolutely, brother. I've been trying to get a hold of you for what? Uh, at least a week. Yeah, at least a week. Like I said, your channel is phenomenal. I love the content. I appreciate and it. I hope to someday match the content, but I think you are a little bit ahead of me in terms of, uh, not a little bit, you're light years ahead of me in terms of, uh, you know, uh, legal blogging. And you definitely have. I don't have any experience. Well, I can't say that. I have some experience in the legal arena where I've actually gone to court, but that's only been for myself. So you have some experience. Uh, Like I said, your channel is phenomenal, and I can't wait for us to, uh, you know, collaborate on some future videos. Uh, One of the potential topics is going to be who does the police serve and protect? I'm actually going to try to hit up a few more people and get them to join in. On, Absolutely. on that conversation. That's going to be 
a nice conversation. But other than that, man, you know what? <clears throat> like I said, uh, we can. Uh, I'll reach out to you and try to work out the logistics to schedule some future videos. And for the most part, you know, thanks for you know coming and hanging out on the channel. Hey, appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. Right. And, and don't forget, you got to get set up so you can uh, invite me to your channel as well. Like I said, I'm right now. I'm using a free hey, Sunday. Sunday for sure. Um, I want to say I'm a since I get up late, but it'll probably be about three o'clock. I okay. generally do um, at least an hour, hour and a half long session of question and answer. So anybody that wanted to come there to have a actual question, I can bring you on and because how many people does it allow you to bring on here? Oh, StreamYard. So I have the I have the free version. Okay. And I I, I don't know. I think I've gotten up to four people before on the free version. Oh, that's more than, hey, that's more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's a limit on the free version. I think the only limit on the free version is that you have this logo in the uh, top right hand corner? That's the oh, only I, thing I know of. Nobody care about that, right? I mean, <laughs> the version has more features. Oh, uh, yeah. I am going to ask you though, brother. Can I actually put this video up on my channel too? Of course, of course. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Um, I wish I knew how to get it to you. I think there's an. Oh, I, I, once it finishes uploading, I'll come and download it. Okay, cool. See, right. I, I know I know how to do that. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? Actually, that that creates a lot of uh, extra work for you. I know Zoom actually allows you to everybody to record. Like the 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 host has to give you permission to record, and then you get it right away. But you know, you have to go what works with your pricing structure and everything. So, okay. Yeah, that, 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 it's it's all good. All so right. yeah, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to our next video. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate. It. All right, take it easy. You too. Later.